All right, Clint from the doorway, too. Hanging out with the mysterious fellow from Angskrieg. Uh, really do appreciate this very, very much. Uh, appreciate uh, you taking the time to be with us. Uh, the first question that I'm going to have is, what motivates you to do this project? First of all, uh, thank you uh, for having us. Uh, I guess the, the the love of music mm-hmm. and the love, especially the love of um, of uh, the Nordic metal music. Uh, there are some very interesting metal scenes here in the north, and mm-hmm. uh, we brought a lot to the table. So, yeah, we um, just, yeah. It's just a love for all, all sorts, all things Nordic, I guess. Excellent, very cool. Um, so I guess the best way uh, a friend of mine have kind of explained this project to other people before we play it is it's kind of a, a heavy mix of like punk, black thrash, and heavy grooves kind of all mixed together. I kind of wanted to see. What made you put those elements together in the way that you have where I don't want to call it black and roll because it's not just that. It has black and roll elements. It has death metal elements. It has a lot of punk elements. What made you kind of combine everything to make uh, Angst Grieg the way it is? Um, we just... Um, we just uh, took seriously that we are like... The, the consequence of our past. Uh, there's a long history of rock and metal music, and uh, we've been inspired by all sorts of rock and metal music through through the years. So we just cherry picked all the different elements that we love and cherish about yeah rock music and metal music and yeah uh, punk music as well, and uh, then put it into this. Um, black stew, so to speak, gotcha. uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we, f- uh, we think it tastes great, this stew, so uh, yeah, we just, we just pushed, pushed on when, uh, while we, we had well, our first song, and then, wow, well, this is, this is actually good, let's, let's make more, and then more and more came, so yeah, it's a tasty stew. Nice. Yeah, I, I totally agree. It, it's a catchy stew. Uh, I've been listening to quite a bit. So uh, very cool. Um, so uh, what I really like about the band, I'm going to talk a little bit musically on like what intrigued me. The reason why I kind of wanted to talk to you and kind of do, do this all along is uh, you do a unique thing that a lot of bands don't do, especially in more of the extreme kind of black metal, death metal style where the bass is a major focus. And I really love the kind of dirty, ugly bass lines that you can really kind of hear and progress through that mixed with the brutality and the melody at the same time. So was it, and it goes throughout the record, throughout the whole record like that. So I kind of really dig it. Was there a, a focus on giving the bass more of a voice versus other bands that I've heard? Yes, indeed. Uh, it, it was actually pretty important to us uh, okay. that uh, that the bass uh, was, um, that you could hear, hear the bass, actually that you could hear all instruments. And you, you could hear them separately, but still together. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was very much a focus because a lot of metal music today has this sound where uh, and bass and and, uh, and guitars kind of uh, yeah and even drums kind of kind of yes. mi- mixed together it kind of becomes one uh, whole thing uh, th- that's that's charming as well but that's not what we were aiming for we wanted like dis- distinct elements like a, a kind of a traditional way of, mm-hmm. of, uh, of of doing music where where yeah where every uh, instrument is um, is very is separate but still together very cool yeah and and I, digging a little bit deeper into that the next thing i was going to say is i really love the kind of piano and acoustic interplays mixed with the heaviness so uh it it's the kind of extreme music that i like like when it's it's layered in so many different ways and, and that's really what drew to me plus uh uh the buzzsaw guitar tones when they happen they're so distinct and you can hear the notes a lot of times on those more kind of old school death metal kind of black metal guitars like you said they're very muddy but with these 
it's very clean. It's it's almost to the point where you're right. Everything is separated in a very interesting way, but put together, it makes a really uh, ominous sound. I'm going to say is probably the best words to use. Um, when 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 you put all these songs together, uh, was there a thought process of each song in a place, or was it more just an idea of we have this concept, we're going to write material and let it come as it may? It was uh, uh, come as, as it may. Uh, it was very much uh, like uh, an explosion of creativity within a few months of uh, the beginning of, of fall uh, 2019. Uh, it was like uh, August and September, all these six songs just popped out of us. Uh, so, of course, they they have their their separate um, uh, characteristics. Uh, these songs, but but as you can hear, there are still elements that that go through several songs. So yeah, it was uh, yeah, it just it just came out of us. Uh, it was very very organic in some way. Yeah, it feels very natural listening to the record. It feels like it's just a couple of guys doing their thing and then asking some friends to help out and kind of it is what it is. So that's the next thing I'm going to jump into. The uh, I'm not politically correct at all, so I, I swear a little bit, just so you know. Um, but you have a shit ton of guests on this record, yes. <laughs> all right? All right. Um, <laughs> we fucking do. And, and, yeah, 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 you fucking do. Um, and some really interesting ones, too. So, like, uh, I would never think a guy from Dragon Force or Creator would jump into something like this, but it works really extremely well. Were these just friends from the past or were these specific people that you heard something and you said, hey, if we ask them, let's just see if they want to do it? They're just friends. <laughs> Actually, we, uh, we wrote some songs that, uh, that needed solos and we, even if our lives depended on it, we couldn't play a solo. Gotcha. So, uh, so we luckily we got dear and good and very talented friends who uh, who were willing to jump in. Of course, we uh, we, we picked the songs that we thought that these guys uh, could uh, contribute the best to, uh, but we we didn't have any rules or whatever. Uh, they 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 just got the song and they could do whatever the the fuck they wanted. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> And, and you know what? It works really well. So, uh, like I said, uh, it doesn't sound like that they're not even part of the band. It legitimately sounds like they're part of the band. So whatever you did with them works extremely. It, it's it's really neat. Um, I, I, I just I, it's it's just uh, the, the one of the principles or core elements of this of this uh, yeah, project. This band honestly is to have fun. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and if you let loose and uh, and have fun and give people the space and the yeah, the space to be creative, then then magic happens. So to speak. excellent. Uh, so, Could, you you couldn't say it better. No, I agree. Magic happens if you just give the space. You're absolutely right. Um, so I I. I have a I have a really close friend at work, and he and I listen to the same kind of music. It's ironic. Uh, we've probably the only two people that listen to this kind of style of music, which is it's, it's nice to be able to go to shows with somebody and actually have a, a kinship, like you said. Um, and he kind of gave me a definition of your band and I want to kind of hand it to you and see what you yes. think. And if you say like, both of us are fucking nuts. Great. I don't care. It's what we, it's what we hear. Um, so he basically said, imagine a fist fight between Domin's guard, Devin Townsend, and Mr. Bungle, and that's what your band is. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds uh, that sounds uh, plausible. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, uh, cool. I, 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 I don't have a, uh, any uh, better description. So yeah, let's. I'll, I'll, I'll accept that. Excellent, because that's exactly what I hear. I, I I I hear kind of the complexity of Devin Townsend. I hear the madness madness of Dama's Guard, and then I hear the creative genius of Mister Bungle. So I totally agree with them, like the way it is. So very cool. So I, I guess I want to sit back for a second and ask, why the mystery behind the band? Why 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 the masks? Why the almost 
And if I'm wrong, it kind of reminds me of uh, er early 19th century kind of vibes a lot of times when I kind of look at the, the videos, the presentation of the band, just the way things go. What, what brought this kind of presentation instead of just a normal, uh, you know, everyday band? For us, it's it's all about the music. So this this is this is the way that we think our music wants to be presented visually. Uh, and our music have a, a, we think at least the music can't speak in that it can't speak like us. Uh, it doesn't have the the words to explain to us exactly how it wants to it wants to look, but this is how we think it wants to look. So, uh, and, and our our music has uh, a lot of uh, a lot of beauty and a lot of uh, uh, aesthetics. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, as uh, at the same time, it's very nitty and gritty. So that that was that that was what we wanted to present uh, visually. Uh, also, you know, we live in this age of uh, self -promo promotion and uh, putting yourself on a pedestal in this social media age. And it's it's when you hear here like mainstream radio, it's kind of like you forgot about the music and it's all about the people. Uh, Justin Bieber puts out a single and it's it's horrific. He might have have have, have played uh, have made some very good songs, but nowadays it's all about it's Justin Bieber's new single. It's not yeah. this song, and uh, is it good or not? No, no, it's just Justin Bieber. So for us, it was it's a way for people and actually it it, it has has worked surprisingly well because people are listening to the music. Yeah. And not and not focusing on on the on the people behind it and uh, yeah but that was that, that's kind of the reason why we wanted to do this so but again if it, if it's if the music um, is not the primary thing for people anymore and it's it's uh, uh, the unveiling of the people behind it is more important then we have to like rethink things but until then. Uh, yeah, it's going to stay this way. Very cool. And, 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 I, and I, I agree wholeheartedly. And the thing I was going to talk about is I love the visual presentation, the short kind of videos that you've done. Uh, when, when you look at the actual videos for the songs, they, they, they carry the same aesthetic as the music. So I kind of wanted to ask you about that as well. Uh, was this, after the music was made, did you have those visual ideas already, or were these just things that you tried and they worked? <laughs> it was just something we tried and okay. it worked out really well. Yeah, it, it's we're, we're not that calculated actually. It's not that uh, we we just have some fundamental principles that we we work from, and then. Then let, let's see what happens when we bring uh, like our video guy uh, Daniel into the mix, and then he he took our 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 uh, like visual ideas and then he he put it into uh, he he manifested them in this in these incredible videos and we knew he was he's a talented guy, but he uh, like outdid himself with what he uh, yeah he was when he. When he had had us uh, as uh, as his new uh, subjects or objects, mm -hmm. then uh, then uh, yeah, then again magic happened. We gave him creative space, and uh, the magic happened. Awesome. No, and I agree. Like your videos are visually the way your music sounds. So that's like the one of the nicest things I can ever say to somebody. It doesn't feel like they were thrown together. So if they were, kudos to you because it really does work well on that level. Um, yeah. So let's talk about your record label for a second because I need to know a few things because I, I, I went and researched this label and this may be the most fucking schizophrenic record label I've ever seen in my life. They literally go from just full-on pop music to you 
Like I, I, uh, I mean, uh, the only reason I even know them is because I've listened to some of Kari's solo records from third and immortal. So I know who they are. But other than that, when I dug deeper, the, uh, they legitimately have from boy bands to you. Like I just, I was there, a, was, what was the reason for jumping with this label versus something else? Was it the diversity of music that they actually do or w- what was it? No, it was, um, it was, uh, how do you say it? It, it was their, their energy. Kind okay. Of. It was, it was their, it was their, um, we, f- we felt that they really wanted to, to, uh, to put us out into the world. They did, they really wanted to work for us and work with us. Uh, so that was, that was very important to us that, 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 uh, that we got some people behind us that, uh, were, are willing, to, willing to work and, and are happy to work, uh, for us and yeah, again with us. Yeah. So, um, we, we knew, we knew Despots primarily as a, a metal label because that's, that's where they started at, at least to our, uh, knowledge. Uh, but yeah, we, again, we also, when, when the offer came in and we started talking with this, but still, of course we, we, uh, we, we researched too and saw, yeah, wow, they, they have a lot of different artists, but that is just, uh, that's just the music business. That's not just yeah. art and that's just music and the complexity of everything. So it was perfect for us. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about the album cover and, uh, so do the nooses, or if they aren't even nooses, uh, do they symbolize something about the record for you? Or was it just a, a, a stunning visual that you liked when you saw it? Because the album is such a stark, minimal contrast to the music where it's a lot more active and avant-garde and crazy, where it's a very stark, just kind of simple photo. So, But it, it, it plays so many emotions and thoughts in my head when I look at it. Can you talk a little bit about that album cover? Yeah. First of all, it's a cool picture. Yeah. Uh, and secondly, it's, it's not hangman's nooses. That's a, 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 a little, a, a little truth out there. It's not, okay. it's not, it's, it's not news is meant for hanging. Uh, but what we wanted to present with this album cover was, uh, was that a, appearances are deceptive it's called shadow play you know it's Mm -hmm. we always it's 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 like this day and age everything is on surfaces we never like dig in behind the surfaces and uh when when you first you look at this this album cover yeah it it looks depressive and like nihilistic and uh and (laughs) the the life is not worth living kind of album cover but when you really look at it you, you you notice that they are not slip knots but they it's 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 something else um i'm not going to tell what it is though okay but uh, <laughs> but but it's not hangman's loses and it's it's just like a, a way to like get people to think uh, a little bit more than than just this again this social media age with where everything is like spoon fed to us we 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 like to provoke a little bit we like to disrupt a little bit so uh, that that's the whole point of the of the, the album cover. Awesome. And so I'm going to say my interpretation to you. You don't have to tell me if I'm right or wrong. I I've been looking at it for a while while listening to the music. I in personally in my head think it's the slip ties for boats and that's just kind of what that's what they look like to me because as a kid i used to go out and 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 fish a lot and it looks very much about those slip ties that they just pull off before the boat goes yeah so so good people i'm not gonna tell you i know you don't have to tell me i'm just telling you that's what i thought they were um but uh the next thing i want to kind of talk about is uh how how would you explain uh, your band to someone that's never heard them before? Like, let's say it's the first time they're going to listen to you. What, what descriptive words would you use before they listen to the, to the album? 
that's the that's the difficult part. Uh, that's why we came up with this Nordic black metal label for us because it's easier to just say that and then people Nordic black metal. Okay, that's what the hell is that? Yeah, we don't know. Listen, <laughs> uh, but what to put it put it into more words? It's like we have this core of of black metal that inspired uh, uh, no, not just black metal, but Norwegian black metal. Mm -hmm. And then we plaster all the, uh, the Swedish mellow death, the, the melancholy from Iceland, the Danish groove, the darkness and, and uh, itty greediness from, from Finland. And, and then you have this, this mix of, uh, yeah, again, Nordic uh, metal genres. Uh, metal styles uh, put into to, to one kind of so sort to of speak. So, yeah, it's it's blackened blackened metal. It's uh, blackened metal roll. It's black and yeah. roll. It's uh, black and punk. It's black and rock and roll. It's it's mellow death. It's uh, <laughs> it's black and oh. death. I, I agree with you. And that's why I, I have such a hard time describing it as well, too, because there's so many different things going on. Um, yeah. And then there's even elements of like D beaten kind of crusty hardcore elements going on as well, too. Uh, if you really dig and listen to it, like I can hear old like old D beat hardcore bands, like elements that are absolutely in the bass playing and kind of the way the drumming goes. So, yeah, you guys you guys mix so many and, and Sweden again is huge for that style. So yeah, there's your Nordic, there's your Nordic heritage as well too. Um, does, uh, th does ice Creek want to play live at all? Is it going to be a live act or is it going to just be a studio creation? No, it's going to be a live act. Uh, okay. we have some uh, national Danish shows, uh, lined up in, in the fall. And then uh, we just um, we just announced our our very first show. No, it's not our very first show. It's our very first show announcement was for the Copenhagen Festival okay. here in Copenhagen. Uh, so that was a that was a huge thing for us to be the first uh, show announcement was uh, was the biggest metal festival in Denmark. <laughs> so that, that's that's pretty cool. Absolutely. But after uh, uh, but. During uh, 2022, we hope to go internationally, and then hopefully sometime in 2023 we can go outside Europe as well. Uh, so the the aim is definitely to be a live act, and the, the aim is definitely to go worldwide. Awesome. So that, that with, with that in play, is it always just going to be the two of you kind of as the core band and like live musicians, or are you looking to actually put a functioning band so the next record you make you have actual other musicians that are with you full time we don't know it's uh it's a work in progress uh what we can what we can promise is that it's gonna be something something different when you go to an angstry show it's gonna be uh, a live experience uh but it's going to be a different experience than your regular rock and roll show. Um, we have a lot of things in play and we're going to try different things. Um, we're not, again, we, we are very much uh, focused on, well, we, we take seriously that everything changes uh, all the time, you know, everything in this universe and maybe other universes too change uh so our live performance our music will certainly change over the years so uh when you go to one angstry show at one time it's going to be one thing and then when you go the next time it's probably going to be a, another thing so uh yeah we have to see what what we come up with awesome so as far as the recording process of this record um was it done just layered track by track or was it more of a live kind of creation? Cause just listening to the record, it sounds 
again, more organic. It sounds like maybe you guys did a lot of things live and then added tracks on top of it. Can you kind of talk about the recording process of this record? Yes. Um, again, since we're only two people, we uh, have trouble like being a whole band playing together. So it's actually layered. Uh, but we were very focused on having uh, that the music should have a certain swing. So, uh, and also, we have played together for a long time. We kind of grew up together as, as musicians. So, so uh, we have, we are on the same frequency. Uh, and I, I think that, that, that is, uh, that you can hear that in the music that we uh, actually, we actually grew up with the same groove. <laughs> gotcha. uh, but it is layered. Um, drums first, bass, guitars, uh, grand pianos, and yeah, everything. And then vocals. And at the end, we s shipped these songs out to our friends who did amazing contributions and, and really helped this record to be without these guys, without our, the guest appearances, this would, wouldn't have been half as good uh, as it is now in our years, uh, at least. So, yeah, it was a layered process, but again, with a with a, with a, with a focus on, on the swing that it has had to sound organic. Cool. Um, is there anything so far that you've seen, read, or heard that has been something you didn't expect like something new something different from the band like i i know you guys have your own thoughts and ideas of what you want it to be but a as people listen to it and more people get out there it's going to get a life of its own has cool. there been anything at all uh any any reviews any emails a anything uh you know maybe somebody from the label saying something that it's taken it into a whole new direction than you ever thought it was going to be Actually, the people, a lot, first of all, the, the reception of, of this, this album has been overwhelming to us. We didn't expect people to be this positive. We, we, got, we got one very bad uh, uh, review that we expected a lot, a lot more of because it was like, you guys are fake, yeah, get the hell out of here kind of, uh, mm. uh, uh, kind of review. And we expected a lot of those, but we actually only got one. So that's kind of surprising, but uh, people talk a lot about how original the music is, uh, and uh, we we didn't think that it was original when we put it out. <laughs> Again, we we put all these uh, bits and pieces that we pulled from other genres and other artists uh, together in, in a mix that we liked, but we didn't we didn't think of it as original. So, when people say that we have like a, a original uh, uh, style, it's, it it kind of brings you know uh, brings in a new thought process for us. Uh, it brings in uh, it brings in uh, new ways of thinking about uh, the future and about ourselves and stuff like that. So. The whole talk about originality, it's kind of surprising to us. Okay. No, very cool. Um, is there anything uh, that, that Engstkrieg would not uh, put on a record? Or is everything open and available to try? And the reason why I ask this is with this first record, I don't, I don't see boundaries. Like there are so many different things going on on this record that if, and I'm going to use a really great term. If you are not into thinking man's music, like you are not going to be able to enjoy a record like this. So that one review you got is somebody that's very much stuck in one style. You could just tell, like just from, I, I read the review and it was just, yeah, yeah, it was. He, he even apologized for being so, such, such a prejudiced uh, guy. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. That, that was so funny to us. Like, I'm sorry that, that I, I, I'm not able to. I'm, I don't have the the capacity to right. to, to, to listen to this. <laughs> yeah. So right. so is is there anything that you would that you would take off the table to put with inside the uh, the music of the band? No. 
uh, if it if it works for us, we we have we have no limits or no boundaries at all. Uh, we often joke that uh, again with the music determining the visual uh, side of of, of Angstri, we we always joke if we make a disco record, how would how would we look? Uh, so no, there are no boundaries, and, and, uh, and I can all I can already say that we have thinking about trying very weird stuff on the next record. If it if it's gonna be weird or not, I don't know. And, and if it's gonna make the cut, I don't know. But we're gonna try it. Cool. No, and 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 that's again where that kind of Domin's Guard kind of vibe comes into my my view. Is you guys have a very similar kind of outtake where if it sounds good, it mixes together. It should just be done. A lot of my favorite bands do that, so that's that's very cool. Um, is there any bands that now that you're going to start playing live, are there ones you particularly would like to play live with? Is there anybody that you think would mesh well with? with the band uh, I think we, we we could we could mesh well with a lot of bands actually again because we have this diverging style we could tour with a lot of bands but of course um, being the main support for a band like Behemoth wouldn't, uh, <laughs> wouldn't I get it I guess. <laughs> yeah. but that's you know that's that's the new scenario um uh, we've been talking to uh, some of the, uh, the guests, uh, Matthias from Ann Oceans, uh, uh, from Finland. Uh, like, we wanted to go on tour with people we like, so, uh, so that could be a, a, a cool tour um, with Ann Oceans. Uh, but, uh, there's, yeah, again, there are so many great bands we like. Mayhem. Uh, immortal, uh, cadaver. Uh, yeah. Oh man, I think we could fit in with a lot of bands. Cool. No, and and I agree. So on that point, uh, do you feel uh, you're more of an extreme metal band, or do you feel you're more avant-garde? Because I can't pull either one. I'm gonna say I feel like you fit somewhere in the middle, but I don't know how you guys feel as artists. No, uh, I don't think we've talked about this. <laughs> I don't think we've thought about this. Um, we are so. I think we're always somewhere in between. We're the thing in the middle. Yep. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, somewhere you could you, you could think of us think of us either way, but I think you could think of us. Think of us both ways would be a, a, a better scenario. The thing in the middle, that's us. I, I fully agree. Um, that's great. Uh, is there... With, with future music, do you have some stuff written? Or do you just... Uh, you know what? Next time is next time. Uh, are... Are, are are you going in a drastically different direction? Uh, are are there going to be a lot of guests again? Like, uh, is this kind of an idea that you liked from the first record? I, I just was kind of wondering what the future holds for for the band. Uh, we already have a lot of sketches for the next record, uh, and uh, for what we can tell, it's um, it's going to be kind of down the same alley as as the first one but we're gonna again we're gonna mix it up with with some other crazy ideas we have um for again we can't play solos so we're probably gonna bring in a couple of friends to do solos for us uh, who is gonna be we don't know yet uh then we have um uh, thought about this and that but yeah you know, the, the, like the the struck the the sketches, they they kind of they they pop point in the same same direction as gotcha. as uh, as uh, as speakers. Perfect. Um, so I'll end it with this and kind of just let you have the stage for a few minutes. Talk about the band. Talk about anything you wish. Uh, if there's any new things that you'd like us to know, let us know now. Just 
take a few minutes and kind of let us know what the future holds for uh, Angst Creek. Oh, yeah. But again, we, we're lining up uh, some shows. Uh, hopefully, we're going to go uh, on tour with, uh, yeah, I don't know, Behemoth <laughs> uh, in, uh, <laughs> in 2022. Uh, and hopefully, um, we can uh, agree with the label to, uh, to, to go uh, record the new album in December or something. So we can put that one out uh, like almost a year exactly mm -hmm. after uh, the debut. Um, so yeah, uh, we we are working on new material. We're working on the live show, um, and yeah, hopefully we're gonna bring a, a, a new fantastic record. Yeah, because we think it's fantastic as well. <laughs> <laughs> excellent no that if you didn't think it was excellent why put it out you're absolutely yeah, right exactly, exactly. <laughs> no no that's great um no. so no that's 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 great uh you said that uh you were thinking about trying to go outside of europe as well too uh is there any uh plans or frameworks to try and do some shows outside of europe uh no this is more on like an idea basis Gotcha. For now, but 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 we have connections to uh, to both yeah the states and Southern America, South America, or you know Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. So so we 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 have we are juggling different ideas. But again, we we're in the st still in the in the midst of a pandemic. So yeah, we uh, all we have to like put a lid on that for now, but yeah. sometime within the next couple of years, hopefully we can go yeah, abroad. Cool. Well, thank you again so much for the interview. Really do appreciate the time. Uh, Sky Guest uh, yes. is probably one of my favorite records of 2021 right now. So this has been an absolute honor to be able to talk with you and kind of dig a little bit deeper into uh, what Angst Creek is kind of doing. Uh, I will make sure that uh, your your social media and your Bandcamp pages and stuff are on this link as well when the video goes up so we can get people to, uh, if not buy it, at least listen to it and get to hear something new, fresh, and exciting. <laughs> Thank you for having us. Absolutely. You, you have a great day. Thank you so much. You too. Bye. Bye.